Okay, this is revision session uh, unit two, so that's the year 11 stuff. Unit two, uh, 4.1, Stalin's dictatorship. To what extent had Stalin become a personal dictator in communist Russia by the end of the 1920s? So we're starting off with Stalin coming to power, and how, the question is basically how did Stalin achieve power um, over Trotsky, really? Um, over Genevieve and Kamenev and other rivals as well, but mainly uh, this section of this unit, this first section, 4.1, is to do with how Stalin overcame Trotsky, the rivalry between the two. Um, all started off with the death of Lenin. Lenin had started something called the NEP, the New Economic Policy, which had you know, steadied the ship after the uh, October Revolution. The New Economic Policy had allowed an element of capitalism uh, in 1917, and Lenin died in 1924, and the question was, uh, what should be done with Russia following uh, Lenin's death? So Stalin had some ideas, Lenin had some, uh, Stalin had some ideas, Trotsky, rather, had some ideas, and uh, who would come out on top really depended on how well they were received by the Russian people and how manipulative and uh, underhand devious they were. As we know, Stalin was far more devious and underhand and uh, a wily political operator, uh, more so than uh, Trotsky. So, death of Lenin. Because of uh, Stalin's role as the uh, secretary of the Communist Party, he was in a very strong position to manipulate the machinery of the Communist Party. Okay, so he was able to appoint acolytes. Uh, or, if you don't like that word, acolytes, um, minions, if you like, uh, people that would support him. He was able to appoint them to the Politburo. Okay, so key words there, you've got Politburo, P-O-L-I-T-B-U-R-O. And it fell to the Politburo to arrange Lenin's funeral. And Stalin did a really good job of manipulating Lenin's image at this time and presenting himself as the natural successor to Lenin because he was arguably the most influential member of the Politburo. He made sure Lenin's image was everywhere on posters and statues. People worshipped Lenin, he was seen as a hero by him, particularly the working class, the industrial working class. Okay. Part of what Stalin managed to do with the memory of uh, Lenin was prevent Lenin's last will and testament from becoming public knowledge. Okay, so he was able to manipulate that legacy. So he was able to manipulate that legacy. Uh, he made sure that uh, Lenin's testament, which was unfavourable to him, Stalin, he made sure that that testament didn't become public knowledge. Uh, Star uh, Lenin, for example, would describe Stalin as rude and had actually recommended that the Politburo appoint another man who would be more patient, more loyal and more polite. So Lenin did not want Stalin to be his successor. But Stalin managed to prevent that last will and testament from becoming uh, public knowledge. <coughs> Another thing Stalin did was he also manipulated photographs. It's something that students uh, tend to remember. Uh, he, they, they sometimes describe it as photoshopping. It's not photoshopping. It's a very specific method of changing photographs. But uh, Stalin did manipulate photographs to make it look as though he was Lenin's bestie when, in fact, he wasn't. <coughs> Another way that uh, Stalin manipulated Lenin's funeral was he prevented uh, Trotsky, his main rival, from attending the funeral by giving Trotsky the wrong date. So Stalin was able to present himself at the funeral as Lenin's natural successor. He used those photographs to make himself look like Lenin's best friend and most trusted confidant. He uh, prevented the testament from becoming public knowledge. And he prevented his main rival, uh, Trotsky, from attending uh, the funeral. 
So a little bit more then um, on the rivalry between Trotsky and Stalin. What was Stalin's claim to power? Okay, so we'll briefly review Stalin's main claim to power and then we'll compare that with Trotsky's claim to power, okay? First of all, Stalin controlled the party machine. He was general secretary and an excellent organiser. Gave him an important power base. He had, uh, as I said, he appointed um, party officials junior to him and made sure that they supported him in any um, conflicts with anybody else in the Communist Party. Stalin had also always been loyal to Lenin, although he wasn't uh, as close to Lenin as the photographs uh, made out, he had always definitely been loyal to Lenin from the start. He had always been a Bolshevik. That was the branch, particular branch of communism that Lenin uh, advocated. Another point, a third point about Stalin's claim to power is he wanted to build up communism in the USSR. He didn't want to export it around the world. So, People in Russia who were tired of war, they'd been at war for donkey's years, uh, civil war following World War One. they just wanted to see some payback on their uh, investment in uh, the revolution. I'll come back after, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. So the fact that Stalin wanted to uh, just continue and have communism in uh, Russia alone meant that people were, they were up for that. They wanted to see the benefits of communism in their own country. They weren't, for example, interested in carrying on the revolution abroad like, like Trotsky wanted to do. Okay? And the final point, the final thing to Stalin's, uh, in Stalin's locker, if you like, is that he manipulated the funeral, which we've already talked about. Trotsky, on the other hand, also had claims to power. Trotsky had been the, uh, the communist leader in charge of the Bolshevik takeover of St. Petersburg, or Petrograd, in uh, October, the most influential city, the, mo the most influential Soviet. Okay? Trotsky had also led the Red Army to victory in the Civil War over the Whites, the White Russians, or the capitalist or monarchist Russians. He was a brilliant military leader. And he was also extremely clever. Very clever man, able to gain enthusiastic support when he spoke. And he was a good writer. In contrast, I've already mentioned this, but I'll touch on it again. In contrast to Stalin, Trotsky wanted to export the communist revolution around the world. He believed in Marxism, he believed that uh, communism was the right way to organise society and he believed that it should be taken across the world. So you can imagine that a lot of people in Russia at that time weren't really up for that, they just wanted to see uh, communism taking root in Russia. So perhaps for that reason Trotsky was not as popular with the ordinary Russian people as Stalin might have been. Trotsky was also not able, or not savvy enough to manipulate Lenin's legacy, Lenin's memory. He didn't, uh, you know, he di he didn't sort of have photographs produced of him sitting next to uh, Stalin. Uh, something else that Trotsky, uh, m another trick that Trotsky missed that Stalin was able to, uh, to get hold of was censorship and propaganda. Okay, so Stalin made sure that uh, all books, newspapers and films, etc. were censored uh, and only favourable to him. Much like he censored Lenin's last will and testament, he censored anything that was negative towards him. That's a trend that continued throughout his rule. <coughs> and also through propaganda, as I've said, he made sure that he was presented or he presented himself as the successor, the natural successor to Lenin. So everything that Lenin had ever championed, Stalin basically said, yeah, I'm going to carry on doing this because, you know, Lenin had it right. I'm going to carry on doing that. Also in his propaganda, he managed to cast Trotsky in a bad light. His propaganda uh, sort of denigrated Trotsky as a, a Jew who intended to destroy Lenin's achievements. Okay. Stalin also wrote his own book called The Foundations of Leninism. That's quite an important thing. 
So Stalin wrote a book called The Foundations of Leninism, and you can imagine that if he's writing a book called The Foundations of Leninism, he's going to be casting himself as the successor to Lenin's ideology. And the foundations of Leninism for, for Stalin was communism in one country. On the other hand, Trotsky uh, came up with this policy of continuous revolution, which was exporting the revolution abroad, which you can imagine most Russians who were tired, exhausted, uh, weren't in favour of. Okay. So we're 10 minutes in, and that's 4.1 done. So I'm going to move on to 4.2 and get that uh, started as well. Okay. Uh, the next bit, 4.2... Having looked at how Stalin came to power, 4.2 is about how he strengthened his hold on power, how he consolidated his hold on power. And the first thing to mention, the first way...